Scotland is the whiskey country, no doubt about that. Over 60 distilleries make single malt, a whiskey that's not made of several productions, which would be called a blend. We will be visiting the eight distilleries of Isla, a small island in the Hebrides. We'll also go to the only distillery of Jura, the neighboring island. Isla whiskies are famous for the peaty and smoky flavors. The peat comes from the peat box nearby. It's a deposit of dead plant material. After it's been dried, it burns in a lot of smoke, which is used in the making of whiskey. It fills the barley that's been spread out to dry. There are 3,000 people living on Islay, which is 620 square kilometers wide. The ferry gets us to Polas Cay and we drive to a hostel in St. Charlotte. The next day, we are up and ready to find out about the peaty treasures of the island. Our first visit is Lafrog Distillery. It was built in 1815 and now employs 20 people to produce over 2 million liters a year. Lafrog is famous for its very special taste of peat, smoke and seaweed. The most common is a 10-year-old, but there are also 15, 18 and 25-year-old Lafrogs and limited editions. And here we are for one very interesting visit. Here, the barley is watered for a few days, making it sprout. This is called malting. The grain is then left to dry at the warm air produced by burning peat. The peat that one can find abundantly on the island had previously been cut out in bricks and left to dry. During that process, one can have the malt soak the smoke in, which will give the whiskey a smoky taste. Once it's been dried, the malt is crushed and poured in a tun to which 63 degrees water is added. After being slowly mixed, the outcoming liquid, called wort, is cooled down and kept in a fermentation tun called washback. Fermentation starts once yeast is added to the mix and it will last for 48 to 55 hours. At this point, the liquid is 8% alcohol. It will be distilled twice in large scales. After the first distillation, the low wine totals about 20% alcohol. It goes to another still, which shape is slightly different. After that second process, the liquid comes out with, quite often, more than 60% alcohol. Only the middle cut is kept, while the rest of the second distillation goes back to distillation. Then comes maturation in wooden casks. There are several types of casks, but most of them have already been used to store another alcohol. The precious liquid is kept in cask for some time, between 10 and 25 years for most whiskies, and then bottled with additional water to lower the alcohol volume. Well, the very key points, we, believe, um, we have our own malting process here, we hand cut our peat, uh, our, we have seven stills, our four short ones are 45 minutes. We mature most of our casks here at the distillery and we're open seven days a week. A few hundred meters from La Frog Distillery is La Gavolin. This distillery is one of the most popular on the island. The 16 years old is the most produced whiskey here, and it's famous worldwide for its nose drying nasal effect, its smoky and peaty taste, and its slightly salty notes. Lagavulin is so special because we take care of it and we look after the whiskey, and it's a very slow running whiskey. So the whiskey process. Pro it is a very slow running thing, it lies up in the turn room 
for 55 hours before we take it down and still and we don't still it very quick we look after it and take our time to everything a little bit further we find the Ardbeck distillery built in 1794 the distillery had some difficult times as it closed down in 1981 to reopen in 1997 Ardbeg is one of the most peated whiskies on the island. The most produced is a 10 year old whisky that was designated best whisky of the year 2008 by whisky specialist Jim Murray. The main differences with Ardbeg is that it's very peaty and smoky. So our phenol levels compared to a lot of the other Isla distilleries are at the highest. So where you might start off at, at something quite soft compared to Bonnehaven, you're something very high on the other end of the spectrum. So when you look at Laphroaig and Lagavulin and Ardbeg, they're all using a lot of peat in the malting of their barley and that comes out in the flavour of their whisky. So the main, um, the main mission for Ardbeg is to create a great balance between the heavily peated malt and the very light character of our spirit. Now to get the light character of our spirit we use very large rounded stills with a large area of copper at the bottom, thin wastes for a lot of condensation and we also have a purifier attached to the line arm. So the purifier is quite a unique piece of equipment. It makes sure that it allows the heavy oils in the spirit to go back down into the still where the light spirit travels along the top of the line arm. So it means we're always getting a very light character of the spirit and that's a good balance with the heavily peated malt. So it's a good contrast there. If we had a very heavy oily spirit, our bag wouldn't taste as good. Our bag is a smoky whiskey and some people find a taste of lemon, dried fruit or licorice. After a quiet night at the hostel, we are heading towards the Brook Lady Distillery on the north bank of the Lochendal. The distillery was reopened in 2001 after 10 years of silence, but it's been here since 1881. The new owners are full of inspiration and show it through a large range of whiskies, from light to strong. They all have a common taste of patient fruit and spices. So special. First of all, you're going to come here, you're going to get a good welcome. Uh, you're going to come round and people kind of see our modern sort of typeface, our modern packaging, and they think they're going to see something quite modern. We're pretty much a working museum here at Riclady. We're still using beautiful old Victorian equipment. It's been, some of it's been used since 1881. Uh, getting down to the barley, we're using barley that's grown on Isla. We're using 100% Scottish barley as well. We're working uh, with the Isla Barley, we're working with the farmers. You know, we know these farmers. We've seen them down in the pub for a dram <laughs> at the end of the week. Uh, we're trying different types of barley. We're also trying different enhancements on our, on our whiskies. You know, Riclady are quite well known for uh, trying a few different things. Um, so we have, like any distillery, we're using bourbon, we're using sherry, we've tried rum, we're doing different wine, we've got Grenache, we've got Ikem, uh, we've got different peter levels as well. Claddy, classically unpeated, that's what people might expect, but we've also got different peating levels of the Port Charlotte whiskies. We're about 40 ppm for that, so you're getting something a bit different from Riclady. Then we've got the Optimo, something a, a bit bigger, the world's peatiest whisky we've got in the Optimo. PPM there, we're going up to, say, 169. Um, but you're not getting a smack in the face of the peat. It's worth, well worth the try. So that's something that's different about our whiskies. Here as well, we're maturing all our whisky on site. We've got beautiful warehouses here. We've got two down in Port Charlotte as well, from the old Port Charlotte distillery. 
Um, so yeah, we're the whole, the whole thing here, we're, we want to know where things are coming from, we want to know where barley's coming from, we've got our beautiful spring cup Optimore farm as well, we're using our own spring water, so it all comes together to get the Brooklady package. The Brooklady team plays with a modern touch that distinguishes itself from the older designs of the other distilleries on the island. It's also there that you'll find the largest choice of bottles. <laughs> We are now heading to the other side of the Lockendal, in the small town of Beaumont, to visit the famous distillery. Built in 1779, the distillery shows a large range of whiskies, of which the most famous are the 12, 15 and 18 years old. Beaumont differentiates itself from the other distilleries for a few reasons, one of them being that the peat is not used in bricks but is crumbled before being set on fire, which produces even more smoke. Most Beaumonts are sweet and peaty, but light. One can find tastes of cocoa or cherry, especially for those that were left to mature in cherry casks. Well, what's so special about whiskey? Well, the fact that we malt our own barley, we get all the flavours from our own, we use top quality malt, and we can, we've got Oregon pine wash wax, which allows us to, and the expression, we've got the very medium peated malt, and the, that gives our end product, once we mature it, we get all the, the fruity flavours that you, you might not get from some of the other whiskies. We, we, we can maximise the fruity flavours that we take out by the fact that we use our own malt, we use top quality barley to make that malt and organ pine wash wax to ferment what we mash and that comes out in the distillation where we can get all the fruity flavours that we require to go into top quality wood after 12, 15 years, top quality whisky. The last distillery of the day is the most isolated one, Bunahaven, from where we get a nice view of the island of Jura. Built in 1881, this trustic distillery offers a very delicate whisky. The 12 years old is famous worldwide. It's a freshly sweet spirit in which one can find notes of malt and hazelnuts, as well as herbs and salt. Yes. Uh, Bonnehaven is a very lightly peated whisky, which is unusual for uh, it being an Isla malt. Most Isla malts are very heavily peated and uh, Bonnehaven is quite unique in the fact that it's less than 2 ppm parts per million and uh, is very light and sweet and fruity.
the morning of our last day, we take a small winding road to Kelkaman Distillery on the northwest of the island. This is the only distillery that's not near water. It's been fit out in a rustic farm. Kelkaman uses the local barley and peat. Since it opened in 2005, the whiskies are still young, but have already traveled the world. One can find smells of smoke and tastes of citrus fruits and dark chocolate. Uh, is only independently owned distillery in Isla. Right. The first with the distillery is 100%. We malt our own barley, grow it, it's grown at the distillery. And uh, so it's 100% Isla, and that's what we call it. So we reckon we're pretty special. Across the island and facing the island of Jura lies the Kohila distillery. It's the biggest distillery on the island. Most of its production is bought by Johnny Walker, a famous brand of blend. Those whiskies come from a mix of several single malts. Kohila offers several types of whiskies, the most famous being the 12 years old. Fresh with scents of herbs and mint and a complex, slightly smoked vanilla taste. Kalila isn't as heavy and as rich as some of the other distilleries that you'll get. It's quite good if you're maybe like a beginner, if you're not, you know, used to the really, really peaty whiskies. It's kind of a good introduction to it. Um, it's a type of whisky that you can kind of always go back to. It's a very, very reliable whisky that you can, you're always going to be able to enjoy, no matter what time of the day or or the year. Um, it's not. It's just very, very special whisky that's m most people enjoy. I've not really found anyone who really doesn't doesn't like Kalila. It suits suits most people. After visiting the eight distilleries of Isla, we'll end our trip at the Jura Distillery in the south of the island of Jura. Short trips by ferry and bus gets us to a quiet but festive place. Built in 1950 on the remains of a much older distillery, Jura produces fruity whiskies that are not peated at all. One can find tastes of honey, pine and peach. Most of the whiskies are light and can be drunk before a meal. Jura is very special because in this part of the world it's mainly Isla whiskies that, that, that take the place but Jura having very very large stills is that's what makes Jura so different from the Isla ones plus the fact it's, it's 0 to 0 0.5 uh, phenol level in the malted barley so it's unpeated unlike the Isla ones so it's completely different.
Our visit comes to an end. Last sunset, last tasting. We are leaving taste of peat, seaweed and sea salt behind. Each of the nine distilleries we have discovered has offered different tastes and sensations. But we still have a lot to learn and the Scotch whiskies still have secrets to reveal.